Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode. We're going to be covering millennial nihilism, and we're joined by our friend Bobby. Hi. Yeah, Bobby volunteered. He's a good guest because he actually has a background in the humanities and academia and can provide a little bit more context to nihilism from like an academic angle. But Mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about millennial nihilism largely through casual observation of people slightly older than us. And this topic is something I've seen in a lot of my peers, but I don't think it's that novel of an observation. Like Mm -hmm. I sort of came up with millennial nihilism on my own, but then if I do like a Google search, I can find uh, about a thousand search results. So I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not the first one to come up with this. I wonder if any of that is like people talking about the millennial, like the turning. I don't know. It's a Google search, so it's of like mm. it's biased towards more more recent stuff. Well, but I don't think there was a sense of nihilism leading up to the year 2000. I mean, we'll get into that as we talk about the yeah. 90s end of history kind of thinking and stuff. There actually was this sense of optimism around mm. the year 2000 because mm. of the internet. Like there's this good article I read many years ago about how people became nihilistic or sort of apathetic as this idea of like the frontier closed and it just felt like there was no, there were no innovations to be made. But then when the internet came around, it was like a virtual frontier Mm -hmm. and there was like Mm. new possibilities in the virtual space around the year 2000. So yeah, people were more optimistic briefly for that time period. Mm -hmm. Do you remember like 2000 New Year's? It's like one of my earliest memories because I would have been four then. Did no, actually. No, yeah. My, um, we had some neighbors who really believed in Y2K stuff, you I, know, that like everything's <clears throat> going to shut down right on 2000. I remember that pretty well, actually. Yeah. Because like my, my parents were kind of like worried about it, but they would like talk about it in a sarcastic way. Like they didn't really believe yeah. that it was going to happen, but just in case we should still stock up on like I think so were, many candy. Yeah. More people like, than you think would be like that. My parents, I don't know my mom exactly thought my dad thought it was complete BS. Mm-hmm. So when it turned midnight, he went over to our neighbors and he shut off their breakers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right as it turned midnight. That's brilliant. <laughs> and they were just so ready for it. Like, mm-hmm. It was this, um, these neighbors we had, they were like super conservative. They named their kids Reagan and Reeves, both girls. They named to Ronald Reagan and Christopher Reeves, mm. literally Ronald Reagan and Superman. They were the most like, <laughs> like aggressively conservative like family we wow. knew. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wonder if they were at the Capitol on January 6th. I would not be surprised. Yeah, I, wonder if they're, <laughs> not be I wonder if they're full on preppers now. Yeah, maybe. They're like just the like, barrels of food and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the buckets. I love the, tr- the slot buckets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so back to millennial nihilism. Let's give a little brief dictionary definition of nihilism. Webster's Dictionary defines nihilism as a viewpoint that traditional values and, dele- and beliefs are unfounded and that existence is senseless and useless. Yeah. So it's broadly the rejection of things that give people meaning in their lives and give them some sort of like moral framework. So people... If they're nihilistic, they can give up things like God, religion, their ties to their family, and then they just sort of pursue pleasure. Mm-hmm. Well, that's actually that definition, like in philosophy, that specifically fits existential nihilism as like a like a sub definition kind of. But that is the popular understanding of what it is, what just nihilism yeah. as a term itself mm-hmm. is because of like, I think it's because of like the popularization of like existential philosophy, you know, in like the sixties and seventies in the U S at least it came over from France like earlier, but, um, there's, there's a more like, there's a different definition of like, well, it's it's just like a broader term, Mm -hmm. like outside of like the cultural context, there's like Mm -hmm. political nihilism. There's like, um, epistemological nihilism about like, or, or the degree to which you can actually find any certainty about like scientific truths and stuff like that. Oh, so there, yeah, there's, I can see that. it can be like a, just a broader term for, I don't know, reject, rejecting like ultimate, I don't know, frameworks to defer to and the nature of truth, like, like if you can truth. actually, yeah. yeah, grounding okay. truth, grounding knowledge, grounding belief. So when we say nihilism, we're really meaning existential yeah. nihilism. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, that's how it's used in like but common parlance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm interested in exploring this connection between millennials and nihilism in part because I read the book, The Culture of Narcissism by Christopher Lash. It is a book that was written in the 90s, but Lash was sort of writing about the boomer generation and how their permissive parents had 
sort of created 